Last week, Airtable added AI into their platform so that we can now use it inside of our workflows inside Airtable itself, which is a great step in the right direction. But if you check out this video that I'll link in the description where I actually did a demo and a run through, what I found out was that there was such a big cost in order to generate just two paragraphs that it didn't really make sense. So I reached out to the Airtable support team and they said that it was in fact correct. And it was because I had such a large input that it cost so much money for the output. What I decided to do in this video is not only give you that information from Airtable, but also now I want to go ahead and build out a proper make.com automation into the OpenAI API, as well as into Claude API, so we can have a look at the different outputs and also at the different costs for each particular platform so that you can figure out which one is going to be best for you. So let's dive in. So here we are on the page that we looked at last week, which was the podcast page where we're taking a podcast and we just generated an introduction that was similar to the introduction that I had in the make.com automation. Now, what I'm actually going to do in this particular one is build out the automations from scratch so you can see how I'm actually building them out as well. And then maybe you want to replicate it for your own particular workflows. And we'll add the prompts into every single location to, into each API. And then we'll test and measure how much it's actually going to cost. So what we have here at the moment is the old introduction from my old make.com automation. We have here the AI assisted one in this particular column here, which cost us $1.12 to produce. Now we're going to firstly add in some triggers or a trigger for the make.com automation. So I'm just going to call this a test AI introduction. And the way that I test it is by adding a button that sends a webhook. Now, a quick little hack that I do here is if I do a forward slash concat, I have the formula saved in with this Chrome extension here called TextBlaze. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to sign up for this. But when you're building these types of workflows, there's a lot of things that seem to be repeated quite a lot. So if we can make that a little bit more efficient than maybe doing a copy and paste, then we can use something like TextBlaze where you set yourself a little shortcut. So when I put forward slash concat, it then provides the entire formula into the workflow for me right here. So we can just hit create field now for that particular one. And then we need to go over to make.com in order to build out this new scenario. So I'm just gonna call this a test scenario. Oops, open AI plus Claude. Now I've, I've not actually set up Claude yet either. So we'll be able to go through the exact steps for Claude itself. But in order to begin, we just need a webhook and then we'll go to custom webhook here. And then we just wanna go add and give this a name. So it'll be just test podcast open AI Claude. So you just wanna give it a name and then we hit save. And then this part here after the make.com forward slash is the part that we want to copy and we'll just hit okay. And now we want to add this into that formula where we had all of the X's. So the concatenate formula has all of these X's here to make up for what we just copied from the webhook itself. So I've pasted that in there now and we can hit save. And then if we come across again, and then we just go run once and trigger this button, it should have now triggered the webhook and that information, which it has. So it's produced a record ID which we can now use for connecting to Airtable and into the other APIs that we want to use. So the next one then is obviously using Airtable. So we want to get a record using that record ID. So we just need to find the base that we are pulling that in from. And the one that I'm pulling from is actually called podcast and then podcast tasks. Now we can match the record ID based on what we just triggered with that webhook. And we're now good to go. So that's going to pull that information from this row here and we'll be able to use it, all of this information here that we want to use for all of our future prompts. So the next thing that we want to do now is connect both Claude and OpenAI. So I'm just going to go to flow control and use the router. And up here we can go OpenAI. This looks a little bit different. They must've done a, an update recently, which looks more modern but it seems to be a bit harder to use anyway i'm sure i'll get used to it so here we've got the main open ai connection that we have and when airtable responded to me they said that we used the gpt4 connection so i'm going to keep that consistent and 
the prompt that we use, I'm going to keep consistent as well. So often I will give it a system prompt first and, and, and then a user after it. But in this instance, we're just going to use the user role and we're going to put in the exact same prompt as what we had here. So obviously the variables are going to be slightly different, but the prompt is going to be the same. So I'm just going to paste that in there first and then we'll just do a little bit of cleaning up so that it is basically the same. So first it's, we're saying review the, the provider podcast transcripts and then here we need to reference the transcript and then there's a full stop there. Our brand voice is direct, short sentence, sixth grade language, authority yet friendly. We write in second person as a brand. Your task is to write an engaging paragraph introduction to this transcript. Use our brand voice. Here's the template to use. Section one, begin the introduction with, in this episode of the pet care report, host name. So we need to change that to the variable of host name is joined by a guest name. So we'll change that to guest name and continue the first sentence. There is no need to provide blah, blah, blah. So that is basically all we need to do for that particular section. What I do like about this particular workflow is that we can adjust the temperature in here. In here, we don't have that option. And it's the temperature that helps the AI follow the directions so much easier than if you weren't, if you didn't have control of it. That's why I'm not a big fan of the ChatGPT platform these days is because you can't, you have no control over the temperature. So the temperature here that I am going to use is 0.4. I found this works best for myself. Typically anything 0.3 to 0.5 where it's a little bit creative, but mostly it sticks to the exact way that I want it written, especially when I'm using a template like this, when I'm saying there's section one, two, three, and four, and so forth. So that is there now. We can just change this to podcast introduction. Now we need a place for it to go when it comes back into Airtable itself. So we'll just go insert and we'll just go open AI test output. And we'll just make this a long text section and we'll go create field. And since we're here, we'll do the one for Claude as well. So we'll just call it Claude AI test output and long text here as well. So now we need to send the output from here back into Airtable. So it comes back into somewhere that we can read it. So we now just open up the Airtable module again, go update a record and we'll connect in the same account that we used at the start which is, which I'm not sure why it's asking us to do this again, but let's just do this again. Choose the base that we need. I like to turn on smart links so that if we change the table name or the, the column names, it shouldn't matter too much. In our podcast tasks, make sure we map the same record ID. And then we want to put in the open AI test output field. We want to go to the open AI module, go to choices, go to message, and then go to content and click OK. So that will now send the output from OpenAI back into Airtable. The next thing now that we want to do is go to Claude. So I've not set this one up yet. So we're just going to figure this one out together. First, we need to create the connection and I have it on another screen, but I guess all we need is the API key. So in order to sign up for Anthropic API or Claude API, you'll just go to anthropic.com slash API, click get started, and then you'll come to a page like this. Next, you would just go grab, get your API key and then paste it in. All you needed to do was give it a name and then it creates a key for you. And now we can choose the model. So the model that we want to choose right now is Opus model and max tokens to generate, which would be the same as ChatGPT4, which is around about 8,200, I believe. So let's just add the same in there. And that's a rough estimate. I don't know exactly how many, so don't hold me to that but we're just gonna add that one in. So next we want to then create the message or the prompt, which is a user prompt. And then this is the first time I'm looking at this, but the way that I can see it is mapped out at the moment. So your user prompt is the one that is going to give you the output. That's like the prompt, the thing that you're asking for. The assistant is to train it on certain data. So if you want to train it on a specific outcome that you're looking for, then you would use the assistant. In this case, we're trying to keep everything equal where we're not training any models and with any of our data, we're just simply testing for the outputs. 
So next, we just want to select then the text for that particular prompt. And then here is where we'll put in the, t the same text that we used in this particular reference here. So hopefully if I can just copy that, it's going to map everything across exactly the same. And it does, so that's good. There's nothing else that we really need to change there. I am gonna have a look at advanced settings to see what else is available. So a system prompt is a way of providing, okay, so they've got the system prompt here in the different section. So normally OpenAI will have it in this section here, but you can actually provide a system prompt, which is providing more context and instructions to the system itself. User ID, I'd have to read up on that. I don't know exactly what that is. And then we've got temperature here as well. So let's keep all things even for our make.com automations and we'll put our temperature to 0.4 as well. So next we need to map that to Airtable and a quick little hack that I figured out which makes things so much quicker when you're mapping things back into Airtable is if you just right click on an old module that's already been mapped and you just go clone, you can then drag that down and then simply instead of having to find the base, find the table, add the record ID, all we need to do now is delete that old version out and add the new version in. So imagine this is going to be in the same place, which is content and then text, I would think. I don't think it would be anywhere else. So that should be correct. And we'll hit OK. Make.com doesn't save on its own. So you always want to hit save as you're going. Now, one thing that we want to look at before we do any testing here is the amount of usage that we've had today. So we can figure out how much we're going to actually be spending for each of these. So let me bring up the OpenAI API one first. So you can see the month has just reset for us and we've not used it a lot this week. So we've spent 42 cents and the date is the 4th of April and there's been nothing spent on any of these days on the 4th. They were all on the 3rd last time. So basically whatever the amount usage amount is, which should be in this column here, then that will be how much it actually costs. Now, the Claude one, the Anthropic one, I've not used any output, any tokens at all. So if we have a look here, it's saying that we used 19 tokens for some reason, which I'm not sure what that means, but anyway, we can keep that as a reference if we need to, but we are using the Claude 3 Opus and it's not saying that anything has been used there. So all is well and good for us to begin testing now. So in order to test, I'm just gonna hit run once and then we're gonna come across into Airtable and then hit this button. If we come back, we should now see it, okay? So we've immediately found an issue with the OpenAI module. And basically what this is saying is that the transcript is too long to fit into the GPT-4 model. So we'll have to use GPT-4 Turbo in this instance because it's got a longer to context win window which means it's also gonna be a little bit more expensive. So potentially that could have happened in Airtable as well, which is why that was a little bit more expensive. We can also see here that the message requires 14,791 tokens, which means we have to now update Claude as well. I'm just gonna put 15,000 tokens here. So let's hit save and we'll try that again. So we'll hit run, run once and then we'll go button. Hopefully now it's gonna run. So you can see it's running up here. Right, so we've got a error on Claude. Basically, it's saying that there's not enough context window for Claude. All right, so looking at it again, it's saying the output tokens for Claude is 4096. So I just got a little bit mixed up there with basically we can still put more in. So the input tokens is up to 200,000, but the max tokens for output is 4096. So hopefully now that is gonna run, we'll just hit save and that's still disabled. So we'll go run once again. Before I do that, I'm actually just gonna to check to see if that include, if that used up any of the usage, making sure that we pricing this correctly. Hopefully there's not too much of a delay, but that should be correct. All right, let's try this one now. And looks like it's actually running this time. So we did fix that problem there. So it's running through the best version or the best model that Anthropic have and that's been sent back to Airtable. So let's have a look at how each of these compare. So this is the OpenAI version and it seems to be a little bit longer than the other one. I'm not going to read all of this out. You can pause it and read each one and see which ones you like if you wish. 
If you've been watching my channel at all for a period of time, you will know how much I hate these types of sentences, these juxtaposing type of contrasting sentences where, it's, where it says things like, this conversation is not just a discussion, it's a deep dive. I just really hate with a passion how often it uses it. Sure, use those occasionally, but almost every single output chat GPT seems to do that. So what I, that is one big thing I've noticed here is that Claude just seems to be much more to the point, uh, much more direct, much more human-like writing. So it's possible that I'll move across all of our open AI outputs into Claude because the output here just seems to be so much better than open AI itself. Cool. So the next thing that we need to look at is how much did each of those actually cost? Let's dive into the OpenAI platform first. Remember we use GPT for Turbo. So we'll be able to refresh this and we can see here that is used 15 cents for that output. So remember Airtable AI for this exact same task have charged us $1.12, whereas we're using GPT for Turbo, which is currently the most expensive model. The actual real cost is 15 cents. If you're using this at scale, then it makes so much more sense to learn a little bit of make.com and ensure you're using the API and you'll save, what's that, 80% of the costs. Now let's have a look at Anthropic Claude and we'll see how much this one used. So if we go down to here, Claude 3 Opus tier, and it used 15,000 tokens, 183 output tokens. Does it give us how much that actually costs? So I should have come to this page earlier, but what happened when I signed up for Anthropic was they give me $5 credit. And remember, we didn't use any anything else before we got started. So that means we've actually used 25 cents. So it is a little bit more expensive in Claude, but I would say the output is way better. And for the extra 10 cents, I'd be willing to pay that just to make sure that we're getting a better output. So there you have it, Airtable AI versus OpenAI versus Claude AI and the different costs that each of those platforms are charging you. And my interpretation of that is, is if you are going to be using these types of workflows at scale and you're going to be using them every single day, then it's absolutely worth learning make.com or one of these automation platforms so that you can plug into the API and save maybe up to 80% of what Airtable AI would actually be charging you. So I love Airtable and it's great to see AI in their platform, but the costs right now are probably a little bit too much for me to recommend it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And if this was valuable to you, I do have a newsletter where I dive into these advanced types of techniques for experienced business owners. So there'll be a link in the description for you to sign up. See you in the next one.